in this session we'll start creating our own wordpress theme so before we dive into the finished wordpress theme we need to first understand the basic understanding of wordpress theme development so in this session we'll learn the basic understanding of creating a new wordpress theme now to create a wordpress theme you need to create a folder in the wordpress theme directory or you can just upload your theme using upload theme option if you choose the second option you need to first make a zip file of your theme and then upload it in the wordpress this step is only useful when you have ready theme but as you know we are creating this theme from the scratch so let's create a new folder in the wordpress theme directory so let me just open my wordpress directory so i'm going to just first open my xm control panel and just click on this explorer when i click on it this will open the xm folder here in this folder we have htdoc folder just click on it and open it and in this folder we have wordpress installation right here and from this wordpress installation just open the wp content folder and from here you can see we have plugins themes and uploads just open the themes folder and you can find you have different themes here now to create a new theme i'm going to create a new folder here so i'm going to simply create a new folder inside this theme directory so i'm going to name my folder wp daily and inside this folder we're going to create wordpress template files we're going to talk about what is wordpress template file later in this course let's open this folder inside the editor so i'm going to open this folder in the vs code editor so i'm going to just right click here and open my bash here and i'm going to just say here code dot and press enter so this will open this current directory in the visual studio code editor now as you can see once the editor is open you can notice here i just opened the recently created folder wp daily in this visual studio code editor let me just close this welcome window and now let's start with a basic understanding of creating wordpress theme now before you start you need to first understand what is template tags and you also need to understand what is template files so let's see what is template tags and wordpress template files now before you move to create your own theme you need to first understand two important topics of wordpress development first is a template tags and second is a template files so let's see what is template tags and template files in the wordpress a wordpress theme is a collection of wordpress templates made up of wordpress template tags when i refer to the wordpress theme i'm talking about a group of templates that's made up the theme the WordPress theme is made up with different template files, but the two files that are required to make a WordPress theme is style.css and index.php. All the template files in the WordPress takes the .php extension. We know that PHP is a scripting language which helps your web server to recognize and interpret template files. So all the template files in the WordPress theme has .php extension. Now let's create two required files for the WordPress theme which is style.css and index.php so i'm going to just click on this icon new file to create a new file and i'm going to name it style.css then i'm going to just create a new file again so i'm going to click on this icon again and then say index.php now make sure you create this file in the root directory of your project now this is my root directory of this wp daily theme so I'm going to create both this file in its root folder. Now, these are the two files required to create a WordPress theme. Once you have these files in the WordPress root directory, let me just open my style.css and talk about it. So let's first start with this template file required to create a WordPress theme, which is style.css. Every WordPress theme includes a style.css file. It's commonly known as a style sheet to style your theme. Style can be include text color, the background images and the spacing between elements on the site. This file contains the information about your theme. At the beginning of this file, right here, a comment block known as the style sheet header passes information about the theme to the WordPress. So I'm going to just create here a multi-line command. To create a multi-line command in CSS, just say here a forward slash followed by asterisk and just close it with asterisk followed by forward slash and in this multi-line command we're going to pass theme information in every programming language commands are basically used to ignore the code 
but WordPress uses the style sheet command header to get information about your theme. So in this header, we're going to specify different information of our theme. Now keep in mind, in CSS, command always begin with the forward slash followed by the star and end with the star followed by the forward slash. And in this command, you have all the information about your theme. So now let's see how to specify information about your theme in this multi-line command. In this header, I'm going to specify information about my WordPress theme. So I'm going to first specify the name of my WordPress theme. So I'm going to say here theme name and I'm going to specify a name to it WP Daily. Then I'm going to specify the URI of this theme. So I'm going to say theme URI and I'm going to specify here the address of this WP theme. I'm going to just specify here my site address Daily Web tuition.com and then i'm going to specify author i'm going to specify my name and then i'm going to specify the description of this theme so i'm going to just say here description and i'm going to say here this is my basic wordpress theme right just sort of that i'm going to specify different tags to this wordpress theme so i'm going to say here tags and I'm going to specify different tags to this WordPress theme and separate them using a comma. So I'm going to say here daily template WordPress theme. And I'm going to just say here daily tuition. Now I'm going to specify license of this WordPress theme. So I'm going to just here license. You know that the WordPress has a special general public license. So I'm going to say here GNU general public license now just out that i'm going to specify version of this theme so i'm going to say version 1.0 and just save the changes now as you can see here we just specify the theme name the uri of this theme then the author then just describe this theme with a few words then specify the tags then the license and the version now, if you forget to specify any tag from this list, that doesn't matter. But when you are publishing this site on the WordPress, you need to specify all these things. Now, let me just save all the changes and open my dashboard. And right here, let me just open the themes. So I'm going to just head over to this appearance and click on the themes. Now, you can see here, we have WP themes here. Now here, you can activate this theme. But for now, let me just click on this theme detail. When I click on it, you can see we have WP themes. The version of this theme and the author you can also see we have the description of this theme and the different tags let me just activate this theme so i'm going to just first close it and from here from this activate button i'm going to activate this theme i'm going to click on this button and activate this theme now as you can see the wp theme is now activated now let me just open my website so i'm going to just open my website from this visit site now you can notice we don't have anything in the site. It's completely empty because we haven't added anything in the index file. That is why we have nothing here. This theme is available in this theme folder because we created this theme folder inside the WordPress theme folder. That is why this theme is available in this theme folder. If I create this theme outside of this folder, I need to upload this theme by using this add new button. Now what if, if I just remove few fields from this header? like this save the changes let me just reload this dashboard and just click on this theme details you can notice we just have the theme name the version and the author now back to my style.css and undo all the changes save the changes now when you reload the dashboard you are going to get all the information about your site like this now you can see you successfully created your first wordpress website you know that WordPress is based in PHP and uses PHP commands to pull information from the MySQL database. Every tag begins with the function to start PHP and ends with the function to stop PHP. In the middle of those two commands leaves the request to the database and tells WordPress to grab the data and display it. Now don't worry if you're confused with this sentence. I will give you a very simple example to understand it. So let me just open my index.php file and just zoom this up like this 
I'm going to just add a simple WordPress template tag. So in WordPress, a typical WordPress template tag, something look like this. This sentence tells WordPress to do three things. It will start the PHP, then use PHP to get information from the MySQL database and deliver it to the blog using this blog info template tag. And then just stop the PHP execution. So now you can see this sentence tells WordPress to do three things. This will first start the PHP, then grab the data from the MySQL database and display it. And then just stop the PHP. Now, in this case, the blog info is an actual tag, which grab information from the database to deliver it to your site. There are different tags in WordPress to grab information from your blog. If you want to define what is template tag, then you can simply say template tags are built-in WordPress functions. You can use inside a template file to retrieve and display data. So as you can see, we just use this template tag inside this WordPress template file. Template tags allows you to add content dynamically to your site. You can use template tags only inside PHP blocks. So as you can see here, we just use PHP block to call this template tag. Now the PHP block can be open and close as many times as needed in the template file. A template tag is used in the same way that PHP functions are. You can notice the WordPress template tag used as the same way we use functions in the PHP. Now let's see what happens if I just save all the changes and open the website. Now as you can see, we don't have anything right now. Let me just reload this website. You can see we have the WP theme title here. Using this template tag, we're going to grab the information about the site and display them in the browser. Now, now let's see how you can specify different parameter to this template tag and change its output. Because the template tag is a PHP function, you can pass parameter to this tag. A parameter is a variable that allows you to change or filter the output of the template tag. So if you are using this simple blog info, then you can change the output of this blog info as well. For example, if I execute this file, I'm going to get the simple blog title on my website. I have blog title on my website. But what if I want to change the output of this template tag? Then I'm going to just specify here a simple parameter in the single code. And I'm going to say description. When I save the changes and just reload my site, you can notice the output is now changed. I'm going to get the tagline of my website here. Now, you can change a different output using different parameters. So let's see how many parameters are there in WordPress. Now, there are three types of parameter in WordPress. The first one is string, the second one is integer, and the third one is boolean. Now let's take a look at each of them one by one. So let's start with the first one, string. A string is placed between single quotation mark and set an option for the parameter or is display as text. So you can simply use text in the parameter as well. So you can notice in this blog info tag, we just use string parameter. Now, just out of that, we have integer. The integer are placed within the parentheses and either inside or outside single quotation mark. It's either positive or negative number. And then we have a boolean. A boolean is a parameter that set the option to true or false. This parameter can be numeric or textual. You can notice the 0 is equal to false and 1 is equal to true. And keep in mind, boolean's value aren't placed within quotation mark. Now, there are three variations of template parameters. The first one is tag without parameter. This tag has no additional options available. The tags without parameters have nothing within the parentheses. This tag has nothing in its parentheses. For example, you can notice here the tag is a simple template tag in WordPress. And in the parentheses, we have nothing. This tag is called tag without parameter. Just out of that, the second one is tags with PHP functions style parameter. Now this tag have a common separated list of values placed within the tag parenthesis. For example, you can see here the tag is the template tag and has three parentheses.
parameters here and each parameter is separated with comma now this type of parameter is known as tags with php function style parameter now just after that the third type of tags in wordpress is tags with query string style parameter now this type of tags have several available parameters this tag style enables you to change the value for each parameter without being required to provide values for all available parameters for the tag for example if i just call here the tag you can notice we just specify a query string here we just specify a parameter and its value i'm going to just change the value of this parameter and change it to true so this type of parameter is known as query string style parameter now in this course we are going to discuss mostly use tags in wordpress you can get more information about tags and its functions on the wordpress codex website so just head over to https codex.wordpress.org and from this website you can find more about the template tags now you can notice here because template tags must be used inside the php template files you can easily be customized with html for example you could simply display this a simple description in the h1 or h2 heading tag so if i just wrap this into h2 heading tag like this and when i save the changes and reload this website i'm gonna have h2 heading tag here now if i open the source code by pressing ctrl u you can notice i have this tagline inside this h2 heading tag now you are not limited to only specify heading level tag you can specify any html element here for example let's say i want to print page title on my website so i'm going to simply call here h1 heading tag and call the php syntax and inside it i'm going to call a template called the title so this template tag output the page title so i'm going to just save all the changes you can notice i have the page title here now the best part of using this php into html you can use links as well you can easily use anchor tag with php let me show you you can easily wrap your url in the anchor tag let's see if i just create here an anchor tag and in the href attribute i'm going to call a php syntax and in this php syntax i'm going to call blog info template tag and in the parenthesis i'm going to call url so this will output the url of your home page and we have the url in the href attribute and to this anchor tag i'm going to say home when i save the changes and reload my website i have here home anchor tag when i click on it i'm going to redirect to my home page and if you open the source code you can notice here i have the anchor tag and the href attribute it is refers to the home page right as simple as that now you can see the index.php file is extremely flexible index.php can be used as a standalone file or it can include other templates we will talk about the template files later in this course the index file help us to drag the content from mysql database and insert them into your website make sure the template file name is exactly same as i created in this course if i just rename this file and if i just add here an s index like this you can notice i'm going to have an error message here template is missing standalone theme need to have index.php file you don't have to change the name of these files so i'm going to just rename it to index now you can notice the website is back to the work now in the next lecture we'll start creating index.html file we will see how to get started and create a basic index file in the wordpress theme so i will see you in the next one